Uh, hello, colleagues. Uh, my name is Stanislav Yroshenko, and today it's my great pleasure uh, to be the moderator of the visionary lecture uh, provided by the International Methodological and Scientific Center of Ural Federal University. And uh, today it's my great honor uh, to introduce you uh, Professor Dr. Tran Duc Chung from FTP University, Hanoi, Vietnam. So, um, Dr. Duc Chung, um, actually, he's, uh, he gained uh, substantial experience research uh, in research of text-to-speech uh, technologies, and uh, he's currently interested in emerging technologies and topics including natural language processing, uh, machine learning, Light artificial intelligence and other uh, emerging spheres of uh, up-to-date information technologies and communication. Uh, so he has a very rich experience in the sphere of IT industry. Uh, namely, he has some experience uh, working with Intel, uh, Sony, Descent Zone Solutions Vietnam company. So, and today it's my great pleasure to give him the floor for the presentation uh, with the topic uh, text-to-speech application, Vietnamese experience. So, Professor, you're welcome with your speech. Thank you very much. Thank you, Stanislav, for introducing me to this visionary lecture. So, um, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tran Duc Chung. Actually, you can call me Chung. And uh, I am from FPT USD, Hanoi, Vietnam. So I'm uh, very happy to have my uh, presentation today. Uh, the presentation topic is about text-to-speech applications and uh, it will be about the Vietnamese experience from my point of view. So uh, please enjoy the presentation. Um, as you can see, here's the agenda of our presentation today. First, I will introduce briefly about the text-to-speech and um, uh, there's some uh, um, repositories where they store the codes for um, TTS uh, applications and uh, also some engines that probably if you are interested in you can uh, have a look at them and also can try it out. And uh, the next part I will introduce the TTS applications from the world point of view and also from a Vietnam market perspective. And uh, the next one will be the challenges when uh, dealing and working with the TTS engines. And um, there are some discussions regarding the research directions towards the TTS engines, especially from a uh, uh, Vietnamese point of view. And um, also uh, it probably, uh, it will be probably applicable for uh, people who are working on TTS applications or engines for uh, Russians as well. So, uh, Let's go through the presentation. Uh, as you can see, here's the general idea about the TTS application and uh, TTS engine. Basically, you can see that the TTS is text-to-speech uh, application, or sometimes you can call it engine or module. So the purpose of the TTS is that it can convert the text to the speech, which is similar to human voice. So that's the main purpose of the TTS engine or application. So when you have the engines, which is located uh, at a server uh, in uh, somewhere in the world, probably you can access to the server through some API through the internet connection. So when you input the text and uh, some other parameters, such as the speed of the voice, the type of voice, and then um, uh, you input through your local host and you connect to the server through the API, then you can uh, receive the, uh, the converted audio file based on the text you input to the system. So this is the basic of the TTS applications. Of course, when you design your TTS applications for other purposes, such as the call centers, there's some interfacing and uh, some other modules that you have to work on um, for example, the autocaller module and so on. But uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I'm focusing more on the TTS application and uh, the, 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 the matters related to TTS engines. 
So um, if you work out on the TDS applications and uh, if you uh, have a look at the codes that you want to try out and uh, uh, if you want to do some research about the TDS engines, probably you will uh, go to the repositories to download some source codes available over there. And uh, you can um, uh, input your own audio files and also the text transcripts. Uh, based on that, you can generate the model for your TTS engine. And from there, you can input another text and uh, receive the audios generated from the engine. So basically, there are a lot of uh, repositories available. And uh, the most common one you can see from the, uh, the figure here, for example, the R9, Y9. This one is very famous for Tacotron um, uh, repository. And then there are some repository available and uh, they are freely available to everyone. So you can try. For example, the NVIDIA, it is supported by NVIDIA Corporation and it can help you to enable and uh, to fully utilize your GPU, um, uh, your NVIDIA GPU for uh, processing purpose. And uh, for example, another one which is quite famous and uh, it is freely available, which is Mozilla TTS. And uh, there are some other engines as well. So actually when you look at this table, you can see that a lot of technologies that are being developed uh, from time to time. So um, based on this repository, you can see that uh, the most common one probably is EP, ESPNet TTS. It has about 1.5 thousand stars on uh, GitHub. And actually when you see, uh, when you look at this number, you will see that a lot of people are interested in this one. However, when you look at the long-term support, you can see the NVIDIA and also Mozilla because these are the two corporations which is um, uh, very large in terms of the scale and they have uh, long-term support to their products. So if you want to use the NVIDIA uh, GPU, then probably you will consider to use this NVIDIA one. And um, uh, based on uh, each repositories, you can see uh, whether they are supporting uh, which uh, engine or which modules. For example, the NVIDIA one is supporting Tacotron 2 instead of Tacotron 1. Similarly, Mozilla TTS support Tacotron 2. And uh, just for your information, Tacotron and Tacotron 2, they are actually the end-to-end text-to-speech engines. The repository that supports a lot of um, TTS engines is the ESPNet TTS. And it can support multiple speaker as well. Also support adaptation, neural vocoder, uh, some other related tasks. And um, the, they can provide the pre-trained models and also the pre-trained vocoder. When you have the pre-trained model or pre-trained vocoder, it will save you a lot of time to develop your engine because you don't have to do the training again. Sometimes when you do the training, it will take a week when you use the supercomputer from the NVIDIA. So here it comes to the TTS engines. When you are thinking about the TTS engines, you are thinking of something that can help you to input a text and generate the voice. And uh, you can see from here that we have the neural text to speech. It can support up to 119 voices. Uh, Google TTS is now moving towards the end to end TTS. This one is different from the TTS like World Vocoder um, Malin. So we are not uh, discussing more, uh, much more about the Google TTS because it's very uh, common and famous right now. But we, are, we will be discussing about the products for Vietnam markets. So as you can see from this table, uh, from the list here, we have the FPT.ai. This one is developed by FPT Corporation. Another uh, platform or another engine, which is BTCC.ai. This one is developed by Vietel. Vietel is a military-based company uh, corporation in Vietnam. So these are the two uh, most common pro products and engines 
that support TTS uh, applications in uh, Vietnam. So when, uh, just to have a look at the TTS applications in general. As you can see that the TTS applications can be applied to uh, read the corpus, to automatic answering service, to read the news on the e-news or website, uh, can be used to replace the personnel at the call center. And um, if you are familiar with the chatbot, you will be familiar with the term voice bot in the near future soon. Some uh, Something that probably you can talk to, you can discuss, you can um, um, share your knowledge and also share your information and so on. And it can actually reply back to what you talk to it. So we call it one, this one is the voice bot. In Vietnam, we are focusing on um, call centers and also to uh, read the news on uh, the website. The reason that we focus on the call centers is because uh, as you can see for each corporation, there, there will be a lot of people who are working for the call center to actually perform the repetitive tasks such as calling for people and uh, promote some products, addressing the people's concerns, collecting the people's con uh, information and so on. So by applying the TDS engines or developing applications, we can apply it to the call centers. So for repetitive tasks, we do not have to, uh, to use the personnel to call to person, to, to the customer. For example, if you want to, uh, to uh, just to get the feedback from customer, you can make a call automatically. And um, when the, the customer feedback to the system, they will recognize the voice and convert it to the text using the speech to text engine. And after they understand the text, they can log, log in the system, what the customer feedback to the corporation. So it will save a lot of time and also the, uh, the, the, the investment uh, and the cost to invest into the call center. And uh, another thing that is uh, becoming the trending in uh, Vietnam right now is that uh, people can read the news from the website, for example, from the news websites when they are traveling. So uh, if you have a look or if you go to, uh, to the internet and you have a look at the videos of the streets in Vietnam, you can see that a lot of people are now buying the cars, uh, automobiles, and, and when they are driving from home to work, sometimes they want to update the news. Um, they want to, to know what is the latest news uh, uh, happened within the day. So they can browse to the web page, press a button, and it can play the video. Uh, sorry, it can play the, the news. It can read the news for you. So this one is the trending at the moment. And it, it actually can save you a lot of time when you travel. And you don't have to keep looking at the screen while driving, which is not really safe for people. So in Vietnam, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have the apt.ai engine and also we have the vietagroup.ai engine. So these are the two corporations and uh, they're dom dominating the market at the moment. So let's have a look at what they're offering to the customer uh, for the time being. Uh, here I have a comparison table between the FPT.ai and also BTCC.ai. Uh, actually, FPT.ai started earlier in, somewhere in uh, 2017, where BTCC.ai started later in uh, 2019. And at the moment, the number of voices that FPT is supporting is seven. Why VTC.ai supported uh, 10 voices. So um, as you can see here, the number of voices are, are a little bit bigger for VTCC. And uh, as you know, in uh, Vietnam, we have a very long, uh, long coastal lines from the north to the middle and towards the south. And diff different people at different locations, they will speak differently. So in order to, uh, to reach the, 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 the overall market, we have to provide the voice that can, uh, can, 
can be used for different regions. Uh, the first one is the northern one, and the second is the central, and, and the last one is the southern. And uh, when you are talking about the voice that we can offer to the customer, uh, we are talking about the male voice and also the female voice. Uh, sometimes male customer may want to hear the female voice and um, female customers may want to hear the male voice. So that's the main purpose for providing different voices, genders. And uh, in terms of the free package for trial, FPD.ai provided 100,000 characters per month for uh, TTS application. I think for a small application or for trial purpose, this one is good enough. And uh, so far, I don't have any information about VTCC.ai. For premium package, you can use per, you can pay per your usage. And you can start from a small package as small as $5 for FPD.ai. For VTCC.ai, I don't have any information yet. And uh, for sample cost, in order to escalate, um, uh, accelerate the, the development time, uh, both corporations provided the sample source code so that you can integrate into your system uh, quickly. And uh, FPT.ai supported four, four sample codes while VTCC supported only three. And as you can see from here, the common language is the Python. So basically Python is very common in a, in a, in a TTS application. And in terms of other options that you can provide when you use the API from the, the corporation from the TTS engines providers, for apt.ai you can have the text as input, API key to connect to the server, speed so that you can read fast or slow, uh, the format of the output audio. So here, uh, apt.ai supported mp3, .wav, and also some uh, two standards for telephony system. As you can see that we, we are focusing on the, 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 the potential customer, which is the, um, the call centers. Uh, in the banks. So the telephony standard has to be there. So I think this one is the key and the important point for FPT.ai products, since they can provide a format that can be used with the, the um, telephony system, the, the call center system. And uh, you can select different voices as well, and also the call back URL. For VTCC.ai, you can provide the input as text, the voice, uh, you can select the voice, the ID of the voice, uh, and uh, differently, you can apply the filter, the, the filter in uh, the VTCC.ai uh, application. So when you have the filter, you will have the better audio output. And uh, of course, you have to, you can input the, the speed so that you can read fast or slow. And uh, in VTCC.ai, you have one, one important um, feature, which is a streaming. So they will allow you to stream the, the audio uh, immediately. And uh, this one is important for streamer, streamers. And especially nowadays, a lot of people are going for a streaming and online recording or live stream. So this one probably is a good option for those customers. So after working in a, in a while with TTS applications, uh, I have uh, addressed, I have identified several challenges and also uh, can, um, I, I will provide some, um, some um, potential research directions for addressing the issues. So actually when you're working with the TTS, you will realize that there are a lot of uh, challenges for example, the number of voices that you need to support. Uh, if you have different regions speaking different voices, then you have to support different voices for such reasons. Because some people in the middle may not want to hear the people from the north to speak. 
some people from the north could not hear uh, the voices from the middle because, for example, in my country, uh, the middle, uh, in the middle area, the, the people there, they speak very fast. And usually if they do not speak slowly, we could not understand the meaning of what they're speaking. So sometimes it will bring the inconvenience to us. That's the reason why we have to have different voices for different customers areas. And uh, the next one is the conversion time. And I think this one is the key, the key thing that a TTS application has to be uh, very careful when uh, design or has to be uh, very powerful in, in terms of uh, converting an, um, uh, a text to audio, text script to audio. The reason is because that, uh, if you want to apply this one for a static system, that is okay. But if you apply it to the dynamic system in which the, there will be response, uh, responses from uh, uh, people and the machines, then you have to reduce this delay. For example, if the delay is four seconds, it will be uh, very difficult to, uh, for the customer to accept the quality of the services. Two seconds, maybe it's okay. And uh, sometimes when we speak with the different intention, we will have different way to speak. And this one can bring the naturalness of the speech to the customer. And this one is important as well. Uh, there's some uh, problems with the incorrect conversion of the, the, uh, uh, the text to speech engines. And this one I will highlight, uh, which are incorrect later on. And um, especially when you are having a, a system that collect information from customer or to, um, uh, you, you will have to, for example, if you want to collect the email from customer, then you will have to consider the system that can read the email address. And the email address uh, will be the unique, and uh, it also will have a lot of uh, things that you have to, uh, to consider when you, you read the email to text and the engines will be, uh, and they will, uh, I will discuss this one later on uh, during this uh, part. And uh, also the quality of the, the, the audio input. Sometimes when you do not record the audio um, or you use or you utilize the audio from the open source, such as YouTube or uh, Facebook video, uh, then the non-zero onset will be problem because it can bring the interference to the customer, uh, to, the, to the engines. Also the speech reasons. And um, the next one will be the audio duration distribution and also engine quality. Of course, when you have different audio uh, distribution, you will have different engines quality. And this one, you have to select it as well. And uh, for foreign language support and uh, public data set, uh, as you can see that, when you develop a system, even for Vietnamese, for example, you will have to think, uh, you, have, you will have to consider uh, that you will provide the services to not only Vietnamese, but also to foreign customers who are living in Vietnam. And uh, this one, uh, of course, the designer need to consider as well. So let's go through each one. So the first thing is the challenges of the uh, about the number of voices the system can support. Basically, you, uh, the system will have to support at least two voices, uh, the male and the female voices. And um, for example, in Vietnam, there are three regions that they speak uh, differently uh, in different ways. So at least there will be six, there will be six uh, voices to support. And uh, sometimes you may want to have additional voices to support a certain regions. For example, some of the people in the north, uh, north, northern, and so on. So this one is the number of voices. When you think about the number of voices, and if you want to increase the number of voices, you need to increase the input data set. And uh, for input data sets, you have to go to professional recorder to, to record the uh, the voices and also to type in the transcript. Then after that, you will use the data for training purpose. And this uh, brings in the, the cost for the system. 
So this one, uh, as a designer, if, if you, you are a designer, then you will be uh, considering this number of voices for the system. The next one is the very important one, which is the conversion time. So when you have different voices, you will have different engines and also different conversion time. Depending on the number of characters, the conversion time will be different as well. So this one is our experiment that we have performed uh, in one of our research articles. So as you can see that when we increase the test length, the, the conversion time will be increasing as well. So this one's common. Some of the voices, they increase slowly. Some of the voices, they increase uh, very fast. And as uh, you can see that between the test, uh, this one's for FPT.AI engines. For the test length between 10 to 100 characters, uh, the conversion time will be well less than two seconds for these two voices. And uh, at 100 characters, three voices have the conversion uh, speed, for, uh, conversion time from four to six seconds. Why is this one is very important? The reason is because if you have the interactive system with the customers uh, in which the customer will talk to the machines and the machines will reply back. So there will be two rounds of the conversion. And um, if the duration is too long, the customer will have to wait for the machines to convert the audio then to playback. And uh, this one brings the lag into the system. Uh, and uh, this will be uh, uh, the critical issue to the customer, especially when uh, they want to judge whether the system is really well developed or not. And of course, you don't want to listen to the system, uh, which takes you 10 seconds to reply one sentence from you, right? So this one is the first time conversion. So in um, here, the, the, the speech conversion for the first time is high, but for the subsequent time, it, it is low. Subsequent time, it is low. So we figure out this is because when we perform the conversion for the same text, the first time conversion is high, as you can see in this line. And from the second time, onwards it will be low. Uh, the reason for this one is because after you perform the conversion for the first time, you will have a static audio link. This audio link is linked directly to the text that you input to the system. So for the second time, if you put the same text to the system, they will use directly the link here. So there will be no more conversion for this case. And that makes the, the, the conversion time or the inference time well less than two seconds. And this can be accepted by customer, even though you, you, you can see that the text is uh, 10 characters or 500 characters. And one more thing is that uh, when we perform the testing with the system here, uh, if we increase the number of characters to more than 400, then the, there will be problems with the, the engines. Sometimes they cannot uh, reply back to us uh, the, 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 the infer uh, voice, the info voice. So this one probably is the limit of the system. And um, as I mentioned earlier, knowing the intention of the, the, the voice or the, the sentence will help us to, uh, to interact correspondingly. And of course, you don't want to listen to a machine which always talk uh, equally for whatever you say to the system, right? And uh, intention is hard to understand. If you want to further uh, analyze the intention, you have to analyze uh, the natural language in uh, probably five layers, as you can see here. And uh, different, di different intents may have the same response, while the same intent can be represented by different ways. Different ways here means different audios. So the reason that we need the intent detection is because we want to know whether the customer is complaining to the system or they are happy and they, they are 
free to provide some feedback to the system at their world. And knowing the intention, we will be able to respond to the customers softly. And if the, the engine is smart enough, it will react to the response from the customer uh, probably in real time. Just like when the customer is angry, then the machine may be a softer a little bit in terms of the voice. So this one is one of the challenge. So far, I do not see any uh, any engines that provide the intent detection at the moment yet. So um, when perform the conversion, there will be uh, some incorrect conversion. So sometimes you will see the missing. Uh, the, the effects of missing the words at the end of the sentences. For example, if you want to say, hello, hi, how are you? Then uh, in the info voice, the, 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 the your word will be missed from the, the, the voice. So this can happen. And um, uh, this uh, can happen because of uh, uh, whether it's too little frequencies in terms of the training data set or in, uh, when there are too many frequencies of the words appearing in the training data set. So uh, you can see from here. If there are too little things to, to train, then the quality is not good and the voice might be missing. And uh, when the number of voices of the same words is too much, then it can bring the inference, interference to the system when perform the, the, the training and uh, inferring the output. So this one also we have to consider when we input to the system for training purpose. And um, for the call centers, sometimes you have to read the email address. Of course, especially when you collect the customer's information. For example, if I want to provide my email to the customer, uh, to the call center like um, chungtd6 at fe.edu.vn. So, uh, the, um, the system will have to reply back for confirmation of the, uh, the email address. And uh, they may reply just like chun g uh, td6 at fe dot edu dot vn. So actually, the, my name in this case will be uh, wrongly pronounced. And this can bring the issue to the customers, especially when they're angry. So, um, this one is the, the issues with the, uh, the core centers when you are dealing with the TTS engines. For example, the VU and H here can be understood as VU dot N dot A, uh, VU N H or VU H. So even though these two, uh, these two ways of representation of the same words uh, are still acceptable, are acceptable from the customer perspective. But of course, when the customer name is Vu, they probably do not want to hear uh, their name as Vu. So when you design the system for email collecting purpose, uh, you will have to consider these issues. And uh, as you can see here, we have a table of vowels, semi-vowels, and consonants for Vietnamese. And a different combination of these things can bring different meaning to the uh, emails or to the words in the emails. So uh, when you perform the training for the system, of course you have to input the audio and also you have to input the text to the system. And uh, if the audio file is not clean, if the audio file, audio file is not clean, you will input this unclean portion into the system. And this can bring the interference uh, for the, the train TTS engines. So for us, we are developing the, the, the software to automatically detect when the speech happens and we will perform the trimming of the audio files correspondingly so that we can extract only the important information, which is the voice that we recorded. And we will use this one to input to the system. this one and um, if we uh, if you apply these engines or algorithms to remove 
the the silence uh, silence part here uh, before you use the audio file. Uh, you can actually uh, go to the professional um, studio to record the voice. For example, you can record one hour of voice, and um, after that you can apply the algorithms so that people will not have to um, uh, to cut the uh, to trim the audio file by hand or manually. So this one is also the challenge. Sometimes you may detect the correct position. Sometimes because of the noise, you will detect slightly uh, beyond the vertical red uh, uh, red line here. And this one will remove the part of the useful information from the speech. So uh, the, the accurate non-zero onset detection algorithm has to be uh, developed. Uh, from our part of view, we uh, detect this one using the uh, provided information from uh, FPT Open Speech Dataset. When they provide to us, they already provide the uh, the um, the starting point of the the speech, the starting point of the speech. And uh, by detecting these numbers, we will know. Actually, we should uh, we should. Uh, trim the audio file or not. If the number is too small like this, we do not have to, to trim the audio file. But if when uh, the duration is significant, for example, 0 0.32 seconds, then we have to trim the audio file because this portion is significantly large. So um, the next one will be the challenges in terms of the speech reason. Um, of course, for example, when you speech to the customer, if let's say you want to read the news, it will be slightly fast. If you want to read a news about the disasters, it will be uh, pretty fast. And if you read a story to a, a small baby, then you have to read slowly. And um, sometimes there will be questions Sometimes people will feel surprised about the, uh, the meaning of the text that they want to speak to the customer. So as the developer in terms of the engines, especially TTS engines, you will have to consider the speech reason when you talk, uh, when you develop the system. And um, the next one is the duration distribution of the audio input. Of course, when you perform the training with the audio file, having the duration from uh, two seconds to eight seconds. And um, when you generate the speech, you should generate the speech within this duration as well. Uh, for from uh, two to eight seconds, it will be around 10, 10, to, uh, 10, to, 100, 10 to 100 characters, 10 to 100 characters. So different data set, when you have different data set, the distribution will be different. Sometimes you may see the distribution will be from eight to 16 seconds. Sometimes you may see the distribution center around 50 seconds. So um, this one is also the factor that have to be fully uh, considered when you perform the training to the system. And um, here's the number of the incorrect words uh, versus the file length. File length. So uh, when you perform the conversion here, you will see the the number of incorrect uh, incorrect conversions uh, can be increasing depending on the file length. This one is related to uh, STT engines. So when it's it is Combined together with the TTS engine, we perform will be the, the complete system. TTS STT that can convert the text to speech and also can convert speech to text. So different audio duration will have different uh, the incorrect words. So about the foreign language support, of course, when you design the system, you don't have to um, uh, really focus to uh, foreigner people to support them. However, uh, uh, as the um, 
common sense, we understand that foreign people are part of the country. And when they are living in our country, they will use our products as well. So, um, of course, when they use our products, they will have to uh, listen to 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 to, um, to the voices that is generated to the uh, to their languages. For example, in terms, uh, for example, in Lisk. So when we perform the reading from Valencia, they will be separated into Valencia. Valencia, and they will the the engine will speak Valencia. So the words will be split into four or uh, four syllable word. And uh, sometimes when we input mobility, they were uh, read as mobile review. So for this case, we will need the end-to-end text-to-speech engines. So when we have end-to-end text-to-speech, we will have the um, the the input as a text and also audio files and output is the voice the next one is the public data set for research purpose so as you can see that the common uh, speech data set uh, the, the very common one worldwide is the average speech elder speech and uh, as you can see from the table here uh, a lot of uh, data set are provided for uh, English. However, for Vietnamese, there is a lack of public data sets. And uh, the recording is only used for the corporations and usually they do not release the recordings to public. So because of that, in uh, 2018, FPT Corporation released the FPT Open Speech data set. Uh, it comprises of about 30 hours and uh, 25,000 files. You can use these two for STT and also TTS engines. We also have some other data set, for example, the uh, FOSD Tacotron 2 based TTS. This one we developed based on the Mozilla TTS engine. We also have the data set for speech, male voice, female voice. These two we separated from the FOSD. In the FOSD, we also separated the uh, the speeches that has the question meaning, question meaning. Because when you speak about the questions, you will have to speak differently. In, uh, for example, how are you? And uh, also, we separate this uh, data set into uh, a small a smaller one, which is the non-zero onset Vietnamese speech that data set. This data set can be used for uh, studying the non-zero onset detection algorithms. Aside from that, we have the uh, VRSP, uh, Vietnamese Language Processing uh, Project, which, uh, which provided the free voices for training and also using purpose. So here in conclusion, uh, as you can see that we have go through the several uh, issues that we need to uh, consider when developing the TTS applications. Uh, the first one is the number of voices. So if the number of voices, uh, you want to increase this, you will have to increase the cost. So to optimize, for example, in case of Vietnamese, we have Vietnamese people, we have three regions. Uh, so in total, we will have six voices at minimum. Uh, the next one is the conversion time. Conversion time depending heavily on the engines itself and also the, the hardware behind. So in case you need the faster processing time or inference time, you will have to increase the, um, the capacity of the system and also to optimize the algorithms. About the non-zero onset detection and auto trimming. Um, so um, non-zero onset is very common. Before you actually input the data to the system, you have to do the cleanup uh, phase. So in this phase, you have to separate the recorded audio into multiple files. Then perform the trimming so that you can keep only the useful data inside. And also you will have to type in the transcript or the text to label the audio. So um, probably you can consider to, 
apply the detection uh, onset, non-zero onset detection and audio, audio trimming uh, program to automatically perform this task. So when there's incorrect versions of the engines, you uh, will have to update the engines itself. So uh, for intention detection, you will have to uh, uh, separate into different uh, data set. For example, uh, for example, when you have the data set for uh, happy people, you will uh, put them separately and train them separately. And um, when audio duration and distribution uh, affects the quality of the engine, then you will have to use the sufficient text to uh, corresponding to the audio duration. So you cannot input too much, too many text into the system and it will be uh, overloaded. And about the foreign support, of course, in case you target the foreign customer as the potential customer, even within your local country, and then you will have to consider to support the language for the foreign people. And um, if you use a phoneme for, for, for the case of Vietnamese, you will see that uh, the uh, one, one uh, three syllable word will be separated into four syllable words. Then uh, this one is not really correct in terms of reading. So um, to address this problem, you will have to consider the end-to-end -end test to speech engine in which the input will be text and also the audio. And uh, the output, uh, the, the system will be trained. And uh, when you input the text for the testing purpose, the output will be the audio only. So of course we are having, uh, we have to move toward the end-to-end -to -end TTS engines uh, sooner or later. For addressing the public data set problem, uh, probably we can consider the common voice project from Mozilla. Uh, here they provided the common voices from different languages and different locations worldwide. So this one is totally free and everyone can use. So with that, I would like to thank my team members at APT USD to support this work, and uh, Alexandra and also Stanislav who initiated uh, the invitation to this lecture session at Uro Federal University. And um, here's our research team members. So if you have any questions, please feel free to let us know and uh, also to, uh, to, um, to uh, inform us so that we will um, get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Here's some of our publications. Thank you very much, Stanislav, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, well, um, now my duty would be to ask the questions from the YouTube chat of our YouTube channel stream. And uh, well, uh, the first question um, well, if you do not mind, I will take my, uh, let's say, uh, priority as the moderator of today's session and ask a couple of questions of mine. Yeah. So, and uh, one of the questions is um, the um, um, speech to text uh, recognition uh, of foreign languages. So, and are there any uh, findings on uh, text to speech algorithm performance? Uh, for different languages. Uh, does it matter uh, somehow, I mean, the language, yes, so it's Asian, European, or some kind, other groups of languages, so does it make sense? Uh, yes, yes, I understood. Actually, the TTS engine, like Takotron, they have the support for Chinese language, so they do have uh, the support for Chinese there, and also Korea also have the TTS engine at the moment. For Russian, I do not uh, have a look at it yet. Probably I will find in, uh, in uh, after this session. Okay, thank you very much. So, and uh, the next question uh, also from me is, um, the, uh, so it comes from my personal experience. Uh, so uh, experience of using Siri by my baby. Yeah, so my child. <laughs> yeah, and you know that uh, Siri is completely, uh, let's say intelligent if I speak with my smartphone, but uh, it doesn't understand uh, my even eight years old child 
uh, for some reason, maybe because there is some other tones or some, I don't know, as a pronunciation of different phrases. So, and is there any, uh, let's say, solution uh, to support um, the speech of uh, different age groups of people, like older people, younger people? Uh, yes, uh, this one is also the problem. So uh, when um, people are young, they, they when they do not reach their adult age yet, so the voice tones will be um, uh, clearer, clearer. So the frequency, the pitch, the pitch will be lower. So uh, when uh, people are getting older and older, the pitch will be higher. So uh, by by having different set data set. For example, the data set for child, data set for adult people, data set for old age people uh, to perform the training, then probably they can address this issue. So the, 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 the solution is to increase the data set for different uh, age group. Yeah, so um, maybe it will be possible somewhere in the future, yeah, in the nearest future, because, you know, <laughs> sometimes it's really uh, disappointing, yeah, even for the baby uh, when using intelligent device, yes, and uh, making some complaints uh, when it does not understand her. So, okay. And, um, well, um, are there any questions from the chat, colleagues? So let me see the chat. Uh, well, finally, thanks to speech performance. So it's my question. And um, dear colleagues, I mean, our technical administrative staff, I hear. Maybe I have some problems with the update of the chat um well so um anyway uh i think that uh we'll fix it and uh we'll gather the question from our online audience yes and uh send you uh these questions via email so uh as far as i do not see the questions in the chat currently so um i suppose that our respected presenter uh dr chung will provide uh, the feedback for uh, the questions of our uh, online audience. So if it's possible, maybe to the email or maybe to the organizing committee of today's visionary lecture. And um, so we'll give the feedback for everybody who is interested in the topic of text-to-speech performance. And uh, first of all, let me express my deepest gratitude for today's speaker, Dr. Chung. So please. Thank you very much uh, for your efforts, for your findings, and for your research work in the sphere of uh, text-to-speech performance. And uh, thank you for our respected audience and for the organizers of uh, International Scientific and Methodological Center of Euro Federal University. And um, on behalf uh, of the team of the organizers, yes, using my right of the moderator, uh, let me announce today current visionary lecture closed thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much for your efforts dr chung thank you uh, thank you very much uh, dr stanislav and also thank you very much uh, for uh, the audience to uh, attend the presentation today and i would like to express my greatest gratitude to thank Euro federal university and also the fpt university to support this work thank you very much and hope to see you soon.